use of glory, of love, shining with the brilliance of every Lucy in the sky of diamonds imaginable, and the glory of what is to come makes it none of our current issues and problems worthy of comparison for Eden is ahead of us according to the word of God and we must be confident that he has our backs Christ has promised to uh, cut these days short so all suffering can be lost Matthew 24 22 and he's promised to return his terrifying anger fierce, terrifying anger, Jeremiah 30, 24. Uh, if we will just be loving people and give them the desire in his heart to, to believe his word, to believe his prophecy, because there's a paradox about prophecy. If you believe the doom and the gloom of a earth destroyed with no birds, no fish, no mankind left at all upon it, Zephaniah 1, 1. If you believe that's the true destiny of all of us, then our love will be stirred up. And next thing you know, it won't have to happen. Not uh, at all. <laughs> so let that shine. And so it's time. Finally, we must, of one accord, praise Him evermore. And for all the many blessings that he has given us. He loved us long before we have ever loved him. Evermore let all of the frosts and the snow and the lightnings and the clouds and the mountains and the hills send forth the sweetest praise unto you alone, O Lord. For he is the blessed, the beloved, and the adored. And so we need to sing forth with a happy heart. Imagine what it was like when you were uh, asked your spouse to would you marry me? I remember Linda. I mean, would you marry me? Maybe that's a happy man. She said yes. But that time we call praise. We, we, we need to praise him and be thankful for all that he puts into our hands and be thankful even when something is renewed because he can go back again. Right, Linda? <laughs> I love my wife, and uh, uh, we have issues, so please pray for, uh, for this married couple. And let all things that are growing upon the earth bless you, O Lord, as well. For he is our carpenter of the ages, and he has dropped his plumb line to build wall straight. Because in this hour, in this time, uh, these are the days of the great restoration of Acts 321. So he's not kept in reserve in heaven any longer because people have uh, been understanding his love only in distorted ways, looking through a glass darkly. And so it's time that we need to bless, bless you along with all of the springs and lakes uh, as they reach uh, with their voices echoing the resonance of the glory of all creation that he did bring forth with the little words, let it be. Nor should the seas or the rivers ever hold back their babbling or gurgling or the mighty waves making the mighty crashing sounds as they uh, cry out just like the rocks of, of your magnificence, of your beneficence, because it's time that uh, we all need to let our gratefulness flow out of us as we all join in admonishments together, uh, high praises for He who uh, created all of us. And uh, not only us, but all of the whales and all of the creatures that move about <coughs> in the waters. And uh, it's so awesome. I love watching nature. 
shadows. It's often the praise of Mother the Bible. And all potent believers will now need to declare that we all should be exalting you every day, O Lord of our liberty. And let the birds of the air and the beasts and the cattle bless you as they call upon you with all of their might for making all things right, O Lord of the lightest light. Neither should any sons of men ever hold their tongues as all Israel lifts up your name much higher than the highest peak of the Mount of Olives, and as all of that well-deserved worship flows all around the earth, every servant and every priest of the Lord shall then gladly bend their knees unto your everlasting charity, for every knee will bow at the name of love, the secret name of Christ, from Mark 4, every tongue will confess love, for that is your name, Heavenly Father. And every spirit of righteousness will happily remain holy and humble in their hearts as they sing forth the highest praises unto you alone, O living Father. Uh, for he is our light of light, our star of stars, the star of Bethlehem. Uh, and his glory goes before him. And uh, so it, 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 all of eternity, our praises shall come forth and beyond, if it were possible. And so shall it be that all uh, of his servants will never stop singing love songs unto him alone. And so I say unto our Lord that, O oh, you, O oh Lord, you have re rescued all people of love quickly from a hell upon earth, saving us from the grimiest hand of the most dismal spirit of deathly death while delivering us. Deliver us from Putin, as the prophecy is foretold. Four prophets have declared that he will suddenly be found not. And so we will always, therefore, be giving you our, our deepest thanks, O Lord, because you are extremely good and your mercy endures forever. And as our Father of light lives, and oh yes, he does, and all who worships the Lord, uh, the God of gods, uh, all of them shall have their mouths full of thankfulness for your many good grace, graces which you have delightfully extended unto us, O Lord. So it's time uh, that the people need to realize the truth. And it came to pass in my uh, vision of the Lord teaching uh, while he was walking the world uh, in his resurrected body, 500 witnesses, uh, that's a lot of witnesses, he spoke to that sized crowd all at once. And uh, it came to pass in my vision, which was an open-eyed trance, and when it came upon me and the word of God disclosed, it was like, it was like a, a supernova exploding in the spirit. The earth shook, the, the moon was rattled, and man, I was like on my face. And uh, so, nor, nor did Emmanuel hold back from telling his chosen students of light that in those days of, of heat becoming most fervent in the latter days, uh, the Lord was speaking about these times. And uh, he said that our heavens wouldn't even allow their tears to be shed, and that would come to pass as thirsty grounds below speedily shift and spread everywhere as earth becomes great dust bowl if the people of earth will not join together to defeat uh, these things. And then he said that the earth's crust would be resonating from the resounding of moving mantle that would quickly waste all of the cities of the doomed race that if, if we keep foolishly following after the prideful ways of Babylon. 
and the electrical explosions of deafening lightning crackles would then suddenly detonate within our expanse uh, like some unstable chemicals uh, reacting ferociously with not compatible elements. Even our continental shells people would also be suddenly rearranged in that accursed earth, the vision that I saw. Uh, when its underlying strata would suddenly be moved hundreds of miles out of its place by gargantuan earthquakes. Then Christ pointed out in my vision that uh, our abandoned co coastlines would be betrayed by waters uh, that would be leaving really quick without any notice at all. And within all areas of the circle of the earth, new dry, dry land would then immediately arise to contend, to contend with bloody looking, looking muck that would be thrown up during volcanic conniptions. For our former forgotten seas, the Lord was telling his apostles, would end up becoming swiftly transformed from eruptions while abruptly becoming part madlands of the driest and the most thirsty kind. And the Lord also explained to his faithful few that those bone-dry lands would then all of a sudden be floating upon steaming lava as it cools, and then the deepest gorges would unexpectedly be filled in by our ever-shaking earth. And at one point in my vision, Christ then told them as well that our entire firmament would also be enshrouded with some real dusty ashes during the nuclear war, which he wanted to uh, cut, cut short. And it, it can happen. And it, because if it didn't, then the, the great cloud of ash it would, would steadily be producing some real stagn stagnant clouds that could never be able to empty themselves due to the to natural and supernatural restraints placed upon them. Furthermore, in my vision, our true vine, he emphasized that it was pretty needless to say that all unprotected life would then be ceasing during those most foreboding and darkest hours of God's very worst fury before Earth finally cracks into pieces. And all past vegetation of our greenest plains would then, in that event, would only be curling up into little balls, perishing quickly beneath the scorching rays of our sun uh, that speedily become a little bit more uh, than just a little crazy. And the Lord Jesus further declared in my vision that our planet would then be stripped naked due to those combined happenings that would rapidly be leading our, towards our world's destruction as the curse of Malachi arises as the curse of death. But praise him alone, people. We all this should be cut short, I hope. And I believe I'm confident because the Bible tells me so. And uh, so praise the Lord for our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. He has described Earth's survival due to people obeying his, his message of the Spirit. And so that they can be brought to a fantastic place where they can finally arise and shine by the glory of his love in these days of the great restoration, the days of the great restitution regeneration has begun and then the Lord uh, skipped ahead to the time of the second coming and uh, he said that we would be living together for a thousand years and uh, so know this people and I'm going to wind this up now if you value my ministry please I hope you do uh, please start sharing you know, I'm preaching to nobody out here. And it's a shame because I, I'm inspired to love. So know that as King Solomon once wrote, there is a time for every purpose under heaven. But reading in between the lines, you gotta know. 
that there's also an additional time to cast away old mindsets and a new one to gather some new ideas together. And then there's a very uh, need, need, badly needed time for people to learn about things that will be a benefit and a real blessed time for them to push forward in order to forget all about all of the things that were never even profitable to them in any way. And he who is our Lord of, of the end and the beginning, he also said <coughs> that it will come to pass that uh, God's elect would evermore be living in this world. And the Most High Lord will be with us. And he has been mighty to save and he has set us apart and he is ahead of us. And so it's time to, he's, he's, he's not failed to cover us with his love because he's rejoicing over each and every one of us, singing silently. Uh, and his, his brilliance is shining of his love's glory because he wants us to just take after him and just reflect the beauty of the light that he has sent us. So love from love. Until next time, keep loving.